When I got to be a manager for the first time, okay, so I'm a young woman. I have literally three subordinates. I have no idea I'm going to be a CEO someday. And I have a gentleman that works for me. And I asked him what has become a routine question for me. Tell me about your work. Tell me about your job. Tell me about the problems you have. And this particular man who was an engineer said to me, the problem I have is I design circuits and the bills when they arrive don't match the circuit designs. That's a problem. Now, by the way, it wasn't his problem. That was technically finance's problem, someone in another fiefdom. And I said, what do you think we should do? People closest to the problem usually know how to make the problem better. So you have to ask them, what do you think we should do? Whether you're a CEO or an entry-level employee. And his answer was, I think we should check the bills. So I said, okay, we're going to check them. And we started checking them. And three hundred million dollars later and one year later everybody understood what we were doing sometimes solving a problem starts with asking a question what's the problem what do you think we should do about it and then acting on it yeah it's amazing when you say it like that it's kind of like oh man you know, this ought to be an indictment on leadership, but I think you make a very good point here. Uh, problems are just, you know, leaders, they come up with all kinds of reasons why they don't want to solve or deal with the problem. And uh, chapter three of your book is actually all about problems, what you've just talked about. Your answer is a great lead in. The title of the chapter, What's Wrong, is also what's right. Problems is pavement under your feet. And there's a call out on page 56. Problems are what pave the path to our full potential. Solving problems is what enables us to thrive. And I think you just gave us a great illustration there, Carla. You taught it so well, but I'll give it back to you here because that statement is so powerful. Solving problems is what enables us to thrive. So the very thing that we try to avoid sometimes is the key to a thriving future. What's the psychology of a leader? Because I think there are leaders listening in right now, Carly. They understand everything you said. There's no debating what you just said. It's absolutely spot on. But what's the psychology that we're facing? What are the fears or the doubts that leaders are facing that that create this situation where we want to, uh, you know, put it off till tomorrow? And then the next day, we kick the can down the road to use a political phrase. Yeah, well, so first I would say people need to understand the difference between leaders and managers. And there are a lot of people who would call themselves leaders, but what they are is managers. There's nothing wrong with being a manager per se, but a manager does the best they can with whatever the existing conditions are. In other words, a manager does the best they can, sometimes extremely well, within the status quo. They accept the way things are. Jim, until I asked him that question, Jim was a manager. He was doing his job. He was designing circuits. He was doing the best he could within the conditions in which he found himself. Leaders change the order of things for the better. The reason problems hang around is because in order to solve them, you have to change something. And people actually don't like change. The status quo is powerful. People are invested in it. Hey, we've done it this way for a long time and it works. Or, hey, I like being a business unit president. It doesn't matter so much to me that we're not serving customers well. I like my title. I like my office. I'm not being condemning of people. This is human nature. The status quo is powerful. And so when you set out to change it as a leader, wherever you are, whatever your title is, when you set out to change that status quo, guess what? people are going to push back. They're going to criticize you. They're going to say, for example, something that's been said to me and perhaps many of your listeners all my life, who do you think you are? Why do you think you can tackle this? I mean, we've been doing it this way. It's working all right. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's working all right. We've been pretty successful. People don't like to be criticized. That's human nature. And particularly, I would say, in this culture, where criticism is so omnipresent, it's so it's everywhere, it's all around us, always the critics. Critics are always louder than fans. Isn't that always true? And people don't like that. 
And so what are people afraid of? They're afraid of being criticized. They're afraid of being wrong. They're afraid of making a mistake. They're afraid that maybe if they take a risk, they're going to blow it. And so sometimes it's just easier and it feels safer to just leave it alone and do the best you can with the way things are. That's why problems fester. Mm. And that is what leaders are made for. 